So in today's video, it's a very impromptu video, so I'm filming it on my phone, so I apologise for that. I'm going to be installing sort of additional networking in a friend's house. So this is a new build house, and it's currently not got much networking. Really all it's got is this the incomer, so it's a fibre ONT, and there's a single Cat5 or Cat6 run from here to a media plate in the living room. And that's really it. There's a phone point as well that goes to a couple of points downstairs, but what we really want is to have additional ports upstairs, and there isn't anything currently. So we're trying to work out how to do that without really any additional disruption or like damaging walls or anything like that. So it should be quite a fun project. So as I mentioned here, we've got the ONT here, and that's going into this network point that goes off the living room. So let's take a look at what we've got there. So now here we are in the living room, and this is what we've got. So there's this big media panel, and that has a phone point. The other end of that network run comes to here, and then a TV point. And this is what we're hoping will help, is the TV point is here, and the aerial is up in the attic. So even though we're on the ground floor, what I'm hoping is that this cable runs vertically through the, through the building and up, up to the attic, so we can pull it out and use it as a draw wire to pull additional network cables in. And then if we can run a network cable from here up to the attic, then we can put a switch up in the attic and then drop it down in different rooms without having to do too much disruption. So hopefully this will work and we'll be able to get a cable from here up to the attic. Cool, so we've got the media panel off. Um, it's actually not too bad. So we've got the LCD power over here. Here's the phone line, so the phone line's coming into a phone jack and then clearly going out again, so I think that's going off to a port in the hallway, I think. Um, so yeah, we can't, unfortunately if there's a phone point upstairs, that would have been ideal because it's wired in, I think, Cat5. So that's what you could do in a lot of new builds, is if there's a phone point upstairs, you can kind of repurpose that cable for network, but here there isn't. Here we've got the beautifully terminated uh, network cable, so that's going to this point here, and you can see, yeah, they very much untwisted it all and then terminated it, which is great, but it'll work. And then here's this aerial connection. So what we're hoping is if we can find this up in the attic, we can pull this, and if it's, as long as it's not clipped or taped inside the wall, we can maybe pull this through, get enough slack, and then actually, well, pull this back up in the attic with a string attached, and then pull the network cable in alongside it. But yeah, so that's inside the media panel. Cool, so we've taken the media panel off, and actually I've been able to pull quite a bit of slack through on this aerial connection. So we've also already gone off in the attic and found it, I'll show that later. And I deliberate what I did is I pulled a bit up, so there's like a loop in the attic. So my friend's going up there now and he's going to try and pull the slack back. So hopefully if he can pull that back and we can you know, get the slack pulled back up into the wall from the attic, that means we do have a clear route from here up the attic that we can actually pull this out and pull a draw wire through on. So that's definitely a good sign. Cool. So what we've now done is, that's my friend up in the attic, he's just pulled this cable and he's been able to pull the slack successfully up. So that means that that is loose enough. So what we'll now do is we'll detach this connection here from the faceplate, tie on a bit of this um, washing line that you might remember from the video when I wired my own flat, and then pull this up so we can get this washing line up into the attic, at which point we can tie additional network cable on and pull it up. And then eventually we'll pull this network, this aerial cable back down again just to reinstate it. Okay, so I've now taken the aerial point off and tied on the drawstring or washing line. Hopefully that's secure enough. And then we can now hopefully pull this up into the wall, up into the attic and then we can tie the Cat6 on. And I'm just hoping that the holes that this will go through in the wall will be big enough to take both the aerial cable and the Cat6 alongside, because otherwise I'll have to cut into the wall to widen them and that would be a pain. So hopefully there's enough space, but yeah, time to try that. Cool, so now we've tried that. We've tried pulling this aerial cable, but that plan unfortunately has failed. As far as we can tell, this aerial cable and these network cables are all taped together inside the wall. So the only way to actually pull them up would be to either cut a hole in the living room wall further up, which would be a nightmare. Or we could go under the floor upstairs, maybe pull them up, because the problem is that the aerial cable goes straight up to the attic, whereas the network cables seem to go up to the living room ceiling and through the under the upstairs floor, so they go they split. So you can't pull them all up. So we'd have to go under the upstairs floor to try and pull them up and untape them. And the problem is above here is a bedroom. And so moving all the furniture, lifting the carpet would be a bit of a nightmare in there. So we've got a backup plan. Now this is the phone jack that I mentioned. So it goes from the hall cupboard to here and then it's daisy chained out from here to a phone jack in the hallway. And as you can see, it's wired in what I think is Cat5e. It's a bit cut off, so I can't really see the labeling, but I presume this is Cat5e, it's the same as the other stuff. And then above the port in the hallway is a cupboard. So the plan now is that we've got this cable here, so it comes from, as I mentioned, it comes from the hall cupboard to here, from here to the hallway. We will join this out here, so we'll just link these together to just make this a continuous cable from, he from the hall cupboard to the hallway. And then we'll go into the cupboard above the hallway port cut into the floor there and try and pull that cable up into the upstairs cupboard. From there we can join it again and run it up to the attic. Essentially in the end that'll just mean we'll have a direct cable from the hall cupboard 
up to the attic. It'll just be joined in a couple of points. So it's not ideal joining it, but I've looked at the plans of the house and as far as I can tell, assuming this takes a sensible route, it'll be about a 30 meter run, which is still well within the limitations, like Cat 5e, which is what this is, can do gigabit up to 100 meters. So I'd like to think that would be absolutely fine. But before we actually start cutting into anything and actually trying to run the cable, we'll test it out. So what we'll do now is we'll link these connections together here. We'll replace the jack in the hall cover that's currently a phone jack with an RG45 jack. And then we'll join a cable onto the hallway port to get sort of the right length of the run. And we'll just check and can, it can get a gigabit link. And if it can, we'll continue with the process. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously take this part here, use the extra pairs and join them. So I'm just going to use this little Cat6 coupler. It's just a night bridge. got some CEF. Fairly cheap. It's all numbered on the top with two colour schemes. Helpfully, it's not numbered inside, but it doesn't matter which way up it is. So I'll just link this cable through here. I then also removed the existing network jack just because it was really badly terminated, so I'll redo that. And then what I'll do is I'll use one of the new modules we've bought because the module here matches the module that was in the whole cupboard. So we'll just put the two matching modules together and then we'll put these ones in because you can, can put a label in these ones. So that's absolutely fine. We're just using cheap lap ones from Screwfix because we were quite tight for time as to where we could get them, but they seem okay quality, so these will do. So yeah, all I need to do now is link these through using this coupler. And then we can, well, replace the modules at the other end. Friends already doing that and test it out. Cool, so that's the coupler wired in. So I've just wired the two cables that used to go in the phone jack together. Um, I've also removed this old one, as I mentioned. I'll re-terminate that much nicer using a matching module, so I'll do that later. But yep, that's the, in the living room media panel, the old phone Cat5 is now patched or coupled through to the port in the hallway. Cool, so what I've now done is that this is where the phone jack was. So I've now wired that into another coupler. This is just temporary though, so I've not zip tied it down. This is just, this will come out. And what we've done off that is we're now wired on this huge, big length of really old Cat5e I had. It's just an old offcut. So this is like the worst case scenario because the final length of this will actually be Cat6 and it should be a lot shorter than this. So if this works, we can basically be pretty sure that the final install will work. So it comes out that on that coupler, round this huge length of Cat5, and then it comes in to this other RG45 module. It's also temporary. So what we'll now do is connect the other end up to, to the router plug a little switch into this, maybe a laptop as well to check for transmission errors, check it links at gigabit, and well, see if it all works. Okay, so that's all now connected up. We've put a PoE injector in the whole cupboard and connected that up to the router, and we've plugged a little unified switch flex mini, well, yeah, flex mini I think it is, into the port here. And as you can see, it's powered up and it's got a gigabit link. So that makes me confident that, you know, having the built-in wiring through these couplers joined onto additional cabling, which we'll, which we'll need, but we'll actually use better cable than this, does work so that means I'm pretty happy to go with this route and carry on. Cool and just to test it we've obviously not got a proper fluke test or anything but we've just run some a bunch of like speed tests just to use a bunch of heavy use and checked on the Mac and there's no send or receive errors so that link seems to be fine. Cool so what we've now done is we've drilled a small hole here and this is above that phone point in the hall and then we've used a quite neat little wi-fi bore scope to look down here and see what we can see and we've been able to see what looks like that Cat5 cable going down into the wall. Concerningly, there's also a bit of twin and earth. I think it's over here for the socket. But the problem is with the bore scope, it's quite hard to work out which way's up. So we'll need to be very careful drilling down into this. But what we'll now do is we'll need to open this floor up. So for this, we're using this tool here. And this is a floor access cover. It's from Silverline. It's quite cheap. There's other brands, I think Armeg do one, it's very similar, looks basically identical, and then Superrod do a slightly different one. But what this does is just a giant hole saw that cuts a hole, but then it cuts like a rim around it, and then they give you plugs that I'll show later that can then sit in the hole to finish it, to fix it. So what you do is you, you drill this down, it drills the hole, cuts it out, cuts a little sort of ridge around it, gives you a nice access hole in the floor, which we can use to get the cable out, and then you can just put a little plug in the hole and fix it, so it'll be really good. And the benefit of that as well is rather than just like cutting a hole and then like putting the baton across and screwing the floor back together, that's now a convenient access panel you can take up in the future to get under the floor again. But yeah, the only downside of this is my battery operated drill cannot do it. It's just too wimpy. So we're going to have to use a 1500 watt SDS drill, which is terrifying. It's like the most terrifying tool I've ever owned. But yeah, this will be fun. Let's just try and not like lose any limbs. Okay, so that was terrifying. So I kept drilling down and I ended up like hitting the limit of the tool and it wouldn't go any deeper and it still wasn't coming out. So I was like, 
what's happening there. So I thought it was maybe close, so I, I hit it with a hammer. Um, and then this popped out. <laughs> so we've now got this glue here, and they seem to have like glued chipboard on top of OSB. So that's fine, that's now come out, and that has left a gap that the plug will fit in. But because this big hole saw has that lip, it won't go any deeper. I now then need to use a smaller hole saw to remove this OSB underneath, and then that'll give us access. And then the plug will still fit in, so it's fine. But I would say if you're doing this, make sure you've got normal hole saws as well. Especially if, you, well, if, if you've got a floor like this, or you find you've got a floor like this where it seems to be chipboard glued on top of an OSB. Don't know why. Um, yeah, we'll need to use another hole saw to get under here, and that'll give us access to under the floor. Cool, so we'll be able to get around that. We literally just do an emergency screw fixture on and buy a bigger hole saw, and just basically ran that through the thing on the inside, and that's absolutely fine, so it's wind out to a bigger hole. But as you can see, now we've used the tool, it's got a nice little lip around it. So we've got the access cover, and that will just sit in there like that and perfectly fill the hole. It does sit a little bit deeper than, than it really needs to, so you might be a bit, want to be a bit careful and not drill down f as far as the tool can really go. Here it's absolutely fine because it's quite thick carpet, so you won't notice it. But I suspect if you're maybe putting like either really thin laminate or like sort of office carpet, like the really thin stuff, you might feel it. So you maybe don't want to go down to the full depth, but yeah, it's absolutely fine. And the benefit now is that's the access panel you can easily lift up like that, so you can easily get back in. Down here we can see, we can just about make out, there's that network cable. So I've disconnected the junction box down in the, hall, in the hallway, so hopefully if I pull this, there is slack, that should come out, there we go. So that is the other end of that network cable. Now it's a bit short so it won't reach all the way up to the ceiling where we really need it, so we'll have to join it in here, but that's successful, so now we've got a cable upstairs. So what we'll do now is we'll try and cut into this wall with a couple of access holes and try and run the cable up inside this wall. If not, we could just like put surface trunking in. So it's, you know, we've basically got it done now. It's just whether we can run it in the wall or put surface trunking in. But yeah, try and run it in the wall. Should be pretty good. Okay, so now we've got that hole in the floor and the cable pulled up as we had before. And now we've got a hole in the wall. So this does look pretty destructive, but it's all in the cupboard. And what we're gonna do is when you fit these access panels, so the reason we had to make such a big hole is we needed to drill from inside the wall down into the underfloor void. So to get a drill in, it's quite you, know, you need to get quite a lot of height, otherwise you're drilling at a really steep angle. So we cut quite a big hole out, and we're gonna fit these little plastic access panels in, so that'll fit over it like that. There's a door that'll go on as well. And it'll look quite neat on the wall, you won't really see it. You wouldn't want this in like a bedroom or something, but in a cupboard, it looks totally fine. And it gives access for future maintenance or whatever. Especially because we probably need to join this cable inside the wall, we can join it behind this access panel that'll be good. So then, as I mentioned, I've then drilled a hole from here to the underfloor void, so we can hopefully just feed a rod down there, and then that will go straight through under the floor. So we'll do that to pull the cable up. I've checked with rods as well. There's nothing horizontal across the inside of this wall, so all we need to do is get, a is get a hole that goes from inside the wall up into the attic. Now, unfortunately, this is in like the where the roof slopes, so I don't know if we'll get a drill in from above to drill down into the wall. We'll try that, but if not, I've got another access panel. We'll put one up at the ceiling level as well. But all we need to do now is put a rod through and get this cable pulled up into the wall. Cool, so we've got the rod fed from here to here and the cable's taped on, so hopefully we can just carefully, without it coming off the tape, pull that up into the wall. Probably should just do this with two hands rather than trying to film it, but see, there we go, and there we go. So now that cable is inside the wall. It's caught around my foot, but it's fine. Oh, okay, it's actually caught around the microphone cable, that's going to be a... there we go. And that cable is now coming straight from the underfloor void up into the wall. So that's absolutely perfect. So now we need to just unkink that. Oh, there's a little bit kinked there. I'll undo that. And then we can sort that out. Okay, so we've got a lot of progress now. So we've finished that. We've got the cable up into the wall. And we've dropped a new cable down from the attic. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. So that comes down into here. And we've just got it joined in the middle. And then we've just neatly wrapped up some of the additional slack here. Just so there's enough slack for maintenance. And it's inside an access panel. So we can put the door over that and you won't really see it. And then, unfortunately, we couldn't get the drill into the attic, so we did end up putting another access panel up the top and then drilling up into the attic, but that was fine. So here we are up in the attic. Um, we also added in a loft light while we're at it, just to help us see. So there's a switch down there next to the hatch, and then that. That's pretty easy to do. But now let's take a look at what we've installed. So if we come over here, having to be extremely careful that I don't fall through the ceiling because it's not floored. Over here, we can see we've brought it through. So below the ceiling is that cupboard, and you can see that twin and earth there, but at the back, there's a separate white or grey cable coming up. That's coming up from that cupboard. It then runs along here, along the side of the wall, 
obviously all this insulation will go back down again. And then if we carefully try and get back over here, we've brought it all into this board here installed. So here we've got this board. This is actually a bit of like loft flooring board. We're also going to board part of the loft. So I've just screwed this up in the wall here and mounted these two surface boxes. So we're not bothering with any sort of patch panel or anything. It's a bit overkill for this. So we've just got these two surface boxes that are kind of out of line, but it's fine. And we'll just put some Euro modules in. Currently we'll have about six drops, but I've put a pair of four gang mod uh, face plates in and we'll just blank some off. And that'll give space for future, future expansion. So that cable that comes from there, along there, and up here, then comes into this Euro module here. And there's also loads of slack left behind this. I've left it sort of coiled up. And we'll do that with all of them. So that means if things need re-terminated in the future, we can easily do it. But like before, we've got the, patch, the PoE injector and router connected downstairs. We've got our switch up here, and as you can see, it's powered on over PoE, and it's got a gigabit link. So that shows that this whole run is actually working. So this is actually the biggest bit of work done, really. I mean, so what we now need to do is get all this insulation back down, find all the tools that have inevitably lost in the insula insulation, because, yeah, there's absolutely tons of stuff, and I've probably dropped a million screwdrivers and hammers and bits of stuff throughout the attic, so we'll need to find all that. But at that point, we've now got the main run done. So all we need to do now on a future day, so I'll film that when I'm back here, we just need to do other runs into all the other rooms, because there's a couple of bedrooms basically, one down there, and one at the far end over there, so we need to drop, drop two runs into each of those rooms, bring them all back here, and terminate them into these panels. So, definitely a very productive day. Also, as a quick aside, just while I'm up in the attic, putting this insulation back down, this is a new built house, and this is how we've done the down lights. Like, I'm sorry, but if you're apparently a professional house builder, and you're leaving a down light with insulation hanging out like that, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, it is just infuriating when you see stuff like that and you're like, this is a new install, apparently done by professionals, fully tested and approved, and that's the state. But yeah, bit of an aside. Part of me wants to fix it, but also part of me is like, it's not my install. Should just leave it as their fault. But yeah, it's just infuriating seeing stuff like that. Okay, so we're now trying to drop a cable down into a room. So we sort of penciled out this back box here and then tried drilling down from the attic matching the hole that the cable goes, the position of the hole that the cable goes down for a socket, hoping that would be the right distance from the external wall, but well, that didn't exactly go well. You maybe see a bit popped plasterboard up there, so what they seem to have done is they seem to have put the walls in and the, the cable in the attic goes down through the plasterboard, horizontally outwards towards the external wall, and then drops down into the wall. So that meant when we drilled down matching that, it actually popped a bit of the plasterboard. I mean, it's easy enough to fix, so it's pop, you know, flake that out, put polyfill in, it'll disappear, but it means we can't, on the, at least on this wall, easily drill down into it from the attic. So what we're now doing is we're going to take off this socket and we're going to see if we can feed the network cable down the same hole that feeds this socket and just put our network port next to it. Now, people are inevitably going to, com going to complain that, you know, oh, there's data next to mains, but, I mean, over this short distance, it's not really going to be a problem at all. Like, it's, you know, it's, you're allowed to do it, it's just maybe not ideal, but equally, the original network runs are right above the consumer unit, so yeah, this this like two meters of network running alongside mains isn't really going to be a problem at all. So if we can take the socket off and if we can then drop down the cable alongside the mains, that means we don't have any issues. But equally, these sockets have those screw covers that are currently impossible to get off. So yeah, so we'll see how we get on with that. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to install all these cables where possible onto the external walls, because as far as we can tell, the external walls don't have any horizontal timbers across them whereas the internal walls, we think, do. And that would mean we'd have to cut access holes to drill through those timbers. So if we can just get through the external walls, that would be a lot easier because we don't need to cut any access holes. So time to take the socket off and see what lies underneath. Okay, so we've tried pulling this patterns out, but annoyingly they've done a very good job of cutting the plasterboard to the exact size so we can't pull it out without damaging the plasterboard. But I've dropped a rod down from the attic and I've been able to basically, you probably can't see it, but it's, it's sitting on top of that box. So there's definitely space from that hole in the attic that we can get down to this socket. So we're going to try and cut a patterns out on the right hand side here and then just basically drop a cable down and pull it over to it and that should be fine. Um, it's not ideal but it'll do. So yeah, time to cut this out and see if we can get the rod over to it. Okay, so I missed a defeat and just pulled the socket off so I could get that patterns out because the rod was stuck down this side of it which wasn't really helpful. So we've now got the rod over to the new hole. We also had a bit of an incident because this cut out here to the depth of this metal, this wooden batten they've put across is exactly 35mm deep so that even this 35mm dry lining box wouldn't go in and then click in. So we've had to go out and buy additional metal boxes, but that's fine. So I've then been able to pull that rod, 
pull it over to here and get it out of this hole. Now up in the attic, I've then taped on some nylon washing line. It's the stuff I used when I did my flat. It's really good because it's like just really smooth so it pulls through easily, but it's quite strong. So in theory, if I pull this rod down, we should then get that washing line out. Yeah, it's a bit stuck in these, these, these feathers through on both sides, but we'll go up the attic, keep feeding that down, and then hopefully at this end, we'll have the washing line. Okay, that was fine. It was just the tape was caught in the hole in the attic, so I pushed that through. So now, if we pull this, there we go. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Ah, oh. <laughs> Tape came off. Cool, so take two. Pulled the rod back down and taped it on more securely. There was like a kink in the washing line, so it got stuck and ripped off. So let's pull that down now. And hopefully this time, there we go. We've now got the washing line from the attic down to here. So what we can now do is we can take the cap, cap six onto this, pull it up the attic. We'll definitely get one run in. Hopefully we'll be able to get two. Um, it just depends on the size of the hole at the top of the wall. But yeah, at least that's done. So we can now get the cables pulled in, get the socket all put back on, and we should be good to go. So I've just been doing all this disruption and cutting holes into walls, making an absolute ton of noise, and then I've just noticed someone's been hiding. Psst, psst. Hey, yeah, you're not scared. Cool. So we taped the cat six to the washing line, pulled it down, loads of excess washing line, and we've been able to pull the cat six out the wall. So because we've only got one reel, we won't be able to like do two pulls at the same time. So I'll go along, clip this cable all the way back to the panel where we we're determining everything, and then we'll just pull another one in because there's loads of washing line left so we can just do it again and pull a second one in assuming there's enough space in the wall but I think there is so yeah, time to go and do that okay, so we've now done a fair bit more work so we've run those up to the attic and terminated them so I'll show that in a minute and then here we are, we've put this faceplate on so that's it in, level with the existing one Annoyingly, the colour doesn't slightly match between the, doesn't really match between the two brands, but it was just what we could get in Screwfix at the time. We could always swap it in the future for a more white one. But yeah, it's fine. I've numbered them up, so B001, B002. B basically indicates it's terminated in the attic, and then A will indicate it's terminated in the hall cupboard downstairs. So that's absolutely fine. So what we'll now do is we'll do a sort of quick walk around tour of the whole network. We've still got a couple of additional drops to do to the other bedroom, but I won't really bother showing that just because it's it's going to be exactly the same, if not easier, just drill a hole from above, run a cable down, terminate it on both ends. So I've already shown most of that here, so I know my videos tend to get quite long, so I'll just not bother showing that. But yeah, let's go down to the hall cupboard and just do a full tour of everything from the ground up. Okay, so just to do a tour of everything we've done, here we are in the hall cupboard, which is where we started everything. And we can see we've got those two ports. So this is the port that goes off the living room, exactly the same as before. We've re-terminated re them, swapped the modules around just to do them a bit neater, but it's basically the same. Labelled it up, so yeah, A001 just indicates it's, first, it's port 1 downstairs, and then B will be terminated upstairs, just a bit of indication. And then we've got this port here labelled 2 attic, so that goes up to the port, so that's the that's the port that we, we join, so that runs the media panel, joins in there, upstairs, up into the wall, joins in there, and then goes up to the port upstairs, so the port upstairs is labelled from downstairs, and this is labelled 2 attic, so that's fairly self-explanatory. Also we've got the UDM Pro router here, this is, or UDM, original UDM here. We've got one cable coming out of that going into for the port of the living room. I've got another cable coming out of that that goes to this PoE injector. That PoE injector injects power for the switch, that feeds into the two attic port and that's powering that switch up in the attic. So it's all very neat done over PoE. So that's the whole cupboard, so not really many changes. The only change we've really done in here is just replaced that, this telephone module for an RG45 module and then joined it through. So yeah, that's the whole cupboard. So here we're in the living room, the couch is already in the way so I'm not going to really show much, but yeah, it's just the media panels now here. We've got the original port that goes off the whole cupboard. The phone jack's now removed and just blanked off because it's now linked through inside as we showed earlier. And then you just got the TV point and everything as before. So nothing really that exciting down there. Just what really what was there before, but minus the phone jack. So now here in the hallway where they used to be that phone jack, we've just blanked it off. We were able to get a blanking plate from the same brand as the original socket, so it matches quite well. And even though I wouldn't normally use a blanking plate, there's already one here where like the BT fibre comes through. It comes in and it's sort of linked in there. So I don't really mind having another blanking plate there. Obviously it could be plastered over in the future, but yeah, that's where the original phone jack was, and there's now just nothing into that at all. So then obviously from here, you've got the cable goes up through that cupboard. I won't show it because the cupboard is now full of stuff. And then it goes up to the attic, so let's take a look at what's up there. So now here we are up in the attic, we can see we've got it all terminated and sort of finished off now. So obviously there's a lot of blanked out plates here, we'll obviously be putting those additional runs in. But you can see we've got the links downstairs on the left-hand side, and then the port, two upstairs ports are terminated there. And obviously we'll expand that further once we put the extra runs in. 
We then got the Unify Switch Flex Mini down there, which is just powered over PoE from the downstairs port. We didn't have the proper mounting bracket, so we just used an IKEA shelf, but that'll do for now. We may end up upgrading this to like the normal Switch Flex, which can, out which can output PoE, but we'll, we'll see. And yeah, so as for the cable runs, we've got the run from downstairs we showed earlier, which goes down there. Along the behind all that insulation that's now covering it and comes up basically under the eaves over there. And then for those two ports we showed in the bedroom, they're terminated sort of there, they run down there, around up, sort of up that wall there. And then we decided to sort of stick them in high level rather than trying to put it under all the insulation, which just seemed a little bit neater. Um, keeps it away from all the mains and just is much easier to terminate. So film TV aerial there, which is not what I wanted to show, but yeah, you can see the cable runs along there and it runs right along all the way to the end. I won't go over there because it's quite far away and it's quite dark, but it basically just goes to the end there, drops down on that diagonal beam along the wall at the back a little bit and drops down into that wall. So that's all pretty neat. And yeah, that was pretty easy to do. And that now means that up here, we've just got this little board here with the switch and all the ports. And we can easily add additional ports in as when we need them. And as for that additional office room, we're going to add some additional ports into in the future, but probably won't show in this video. We'll just be putting two more in to that panel there. They'll drop down the wall here, basically run along the floor here, and basically drop down the wall somewhere here. It's literally right below, so it'll drop down to the room just next to the panel, which is why I'm not bothering showing it, because it's not that interesting. Because we've got access to like the cavity or the, or the void, you know, into the timbers here, it's not boarded over like the other side, we will literally just end up drilling through like there, just drilling straight down, and that'll get us into the wall, so that should be really easy to do. But yeah, that's everything up in the attic. And then finally, as I showed earlier, there's these two ports among the upstairs bedrooms. And obviously we'll run the other two to the other bedroom and we're next doing stuff. So yeah, that's it. It's been a pretty fun project because obviously my flat installed a home network, but I did it all from scratch and I had to rip apart walls and do everything from scratch. We were just quite an interesting project because we we're using a new build house that already had some sort of network installed. So we were able to actually use a couple of, use some of that and in particular that phone line and actually really use that to our advantage to allow us to do this without causing really any damage. Like, we did have to cause a bit of damage in like the cupboard, but at least it was in a cupboard. We didn't really cause any damage to any of the rooms apart from that slight crack. So yeah, not really any redecoration work to do. I've been able to install some network ports in the upstairs rooms. And then likewise, install them into the other bedroom or even the other bedroom, there's three bedrooms, one of the other bedrooms, there's no plans to put ports in. To actually drop ports down into that room again would take very little effort and no redecoration. So. Yeah, it's been a really fun project. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching.